Yo, yo, everybody. How you doing? Another day, another bit of anti-vegan bullshit to respond to. Lucky us. <clears throat> so today we are going to be responding to, as you probably saw in the title, Pierce Morgan, who is unfortunately a famous anti-vegan who does a show called Pierce Morgan Uncensored. Have me on, Pierce. I would love to talk to you about this topic because you are fucking lost. Dude, Axel, I was watching LVL's stream, but now I've got a stream. Chantel, what's up? Miss Infinity, what's up? Check this out. Oh, yeah. Chickpea curry with TVP. Veggies, rice. Mmm. So good. So good. All right. So we're going to get pretty much straight into it. But first, how he's going? How's life, everyone? What's up, Renzo? So yummy, dude. So yummy. Bit spicy, the way I like it. Mmm. My God. Nicole Aspie. God damn. So he's good? LVL is live reviewing a debate. Should we watch? Hmm. Let's watch another time. Let them do their thing. And we maybe will respond to this tomorrow or something. Sound good? Because I want to watch it. I watch about 15 minutes of it. And more needs to be watched. But do you, bro. Do you. Of course, I won't be offended if you go to LVL's stream because he's a fucking gangster. So, whatever. I love that guy. Axel, number one, bro. That's why we homies. Hey, Luther, how you going? How y'all doing today? Who has already seen this Pierce Morgan verse? Um, Kip and Cam from Christspiracy. Anybody already watched this video? I watched David Rams respond to it today. Me and Nikki watched it. Well, actually, first I watched it last night. Then me and Nikki watched it last night. Then I watched David respond to it today. Some of it. And now we will do it again. We will do it again for the stream. you already seen it, Chantel. So you know what's up. This guy is so ridiculous. I, I don't know if you read my description, but if it was up to me, he would go to jail if he went near any animals because this guy is a psycho when it comes to animals. He just mocks the suffering, mocks the death, mocks these victims, his victims. Doesn't give a fuck. He has been told over and over and over again and he just... Doesn't care, doesn't care, doesn't care at all. I think it's because of exactly this topic. He's Christian. And he loves meat. What a surprise, just like every other clown out there. I don't know what that meant, Robert. Why what before streaming? Jesus. Oh, <laughs> I'm dedicated, bro. That's why dedication but yeah it's not easy to watch this bullshit over and over but today we're gonna do it because this guy has such a big audience i can't believe it he is so stupid <sighs> the only the only good thing about people eating animals is that they'll probably die young You might think that sounds bad, but if you're going to be like, look, someone who's ignorant, they're ignorant. When you're somebody like this guy who knows better, he's smart enough to know better. He knows. He just doesn't give a fuck. So fuck this guy. Piece of shit. As you will see in this video. 
I'm Aiden, bro. I'm Aiden. Why eat before streaming? I don't know if I'm understanding you, dude. What do you mean, why eat before streaming? I'm not eating before streaming. Why didn't I eat before streaming? I wanted to eat with my fam. My vegan stream fam. All right. So, we're going to watch this guy. Keep in mind, Pierce has spoken to a dozen vegans, at least, who have reminded him by being alive and by telling him, you don't need to eat animals to survive and be healthy. And the death toll of vegans compared to non-vegans is so significant that the numbers you can't even comprehend. That's how big they are. Pierce tears vegans apart. Oh, why does Pierce always treat us vegans like we are aliens? Because to him, we are aliens. We are so evolved beyond Pierce's level of empathy and compassion and sense of justice. We're so evolved beyond Pierce's little brain that we seem like aliens to the guy. He just doesn't get it. He, he like, he's like, nah, I can't, I couldn't do it. I need to eat meat. I love eating meat. I'm going to eat Big Macs. I don't give a shit that they're from factory farms. And Jesus said it's fine. That's basically his shit because he's fucking Christian. Let me talk about Christians a little bit first. This is just all religions. This is my perspective. Fairy tales. Fairy tales. Virgin births, talking snakes, dying and getting resurrected, getting sent from God so that you can die so that his creation that he created to be able to sin can get redeemed for their sins and then he'll go back to heaven. And if you don't believe this, you'll go to hell. You'll go to hell. So make sure you go to church. Make sure you follow the dogma, spread the word and don't forget the donation trays. <clears throat> Is he being paid by the meat industry? 100%. 100%. He's getting money in all kinds of different ways. Just directly from the meat industry, maybe. Maybe he's got some sponsorships or something. Maybe people give him free meat, whatever. But of course, he's, he's got an interest in keeping his brand anti-vegan because that's, that's what he's known for. And he is like the face of anti-vegans. So there's money in that because people will support him just for that because people fucking hate vegans because we remind them that they're full of shit and that they don't need to eat the corpses of murder victims. They don't need to eat a cannibalistic lifestyle of eating dead bodies. People don't like to be reminded. Axel, listen, man, you're a fucking legend. I respect it. Thanks for telling everyone, bro. All right. So anyway, that's my perspective. Why do I think that? Because I've, this has been a big passion of mine to understand religion for my own personal reasons and also for animal rights related reasons. So I've really tried to figure out what's the truth and the evidence for these things. Like to be so confident that these things happened 2000 years ago because it said it in a book because decades after the event apparently happened, People said, yeah, I saw that happen. Yeah, I saw that happen. And they wrote about it. Yeah, he came back from the dead. Don't people realize how stupid people are? Don't you realize how easily manipulated people are? The tricks can be played? Or that none of this may have even happened at all? And just because it said it in the book isn't a good reason to be like, 100%. Yeah, that makes sense. It's in the book, chapter 7, Resurrection. So, uh-huh. All right, I'm convinced. Like, how can you be convinced by that? By a res a, someone coming back from the dead, completely just destroying our understanding of physics and biology in the world. And you're so easily convinced because chapter seven, you read it. It's fucking nuts. Allison. See what you did, Axel, you champion? Bloody legend. Not that I am condoning dragging people from Danny's stream, but you know, if you're going to do it anyway. All right. You just get how I feel. So let's just watch it together before I keep ranting. Let's go. Everyone, just remember, these two guys 
have been studying this topic for years now. They've been, di- they've been deep in this, creating this documentary for years. They spoke to so many people. Pierce is, who, who is this guy to know about Christianity? Maybe he goes to church very rarely. Maybe he's like, yeah, I believe in Jesus. What does he know about it? How much deep study has he done? Has he created any documentaries about Christianity or Jesus? Fuck no. And it shows because this guy can't follow any of his arguments. All right, let's go. Give me one piece of evidence mm-hmm. that proves that Jesus was a vegetarian. Do you think Jesus would kill an animal? Because at the time, back in the day, he would be the one who killed it. Matthew 14, and he calls the fishermen's nets to be filled on two different occasions. The forerunner of the movement, John the Baptist, was known in multiple historical sources to eat only plant-based foods. What's that got to do with Jesus? You're just naming other people. Pierce, what was served at the Last Supper? Do you remember? Well, why don't you tell me what you think was served? Veggie burgers? What? They say this is massively, massively groundbreaking, and um, it's going to really be a new chapter for Christianity. You guys want him to be a vegetarian so badly, you're now prepared to twist the no, actual Pierce. Bible to do Pierce. that. Pierce, Pierce, there's an ethical way to eat an avocado. You are party to mass murder. Mass murder. Well, Kip Anderson and Cameron Waters mass are murder. filmmakers yep. whose hit documentaries have brought the apparent horrors of eating meat and fish to millions of viewers around the world. Now, Calspiracy took aim at the farming industry. Seaspiracy was, well, you guessed it, all about fish. Now Kip and his team are back with a provocative, to say the least, new movie, which threatens to blow the lid off the veganism and religion. Is there any threat or danger making a film like this? Yeah, you just wait and see. You just wait and see. They will stop at nothing to keep this truth from getting out. Is there a spiritual way to kill an animal? Um, I'll, I'll put it this way. How would Jesus kill an animal? <laughs> Is there a peaceful way to kill an animal? <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think about this question? This is like the the catchphrase of the documentary. How would Jesus kill an animal? You know, because everyone's like, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? So how would Jesus kill an animal? I love the question, personally. What do you think? Um, Because it puts an image in your head straight away of Jesus with a knife slitting an animal's throat. And it looks ridiculous. It looks ridiculous to think that Jesus would slit animals' throats when you could just eat plants. Or if you're Jesus, why do you need to eat anything? Aren't you like a god? Why do you even need to eat, bro? So. Miss Infinity. Didn't Jesus go fishing? Good question. It is talked about in this uh, interview. But like, here's my thing. And this is what I'm going to do through this whole thing, right? If Jesus did go fishing. Okay. Okay then he's probably not a very good person to rely on when it comes to ethical treatment of animals. Because even children that I know, know that forcing sharp hooks through animals' faces and ripping them from their homes and cutting their heads off is very cruel. Even kids I know know that. Even I know that. And I'm not claiming to be the son of God. So if Jesus did go fishing... Maybe we should be getting our moral advice regarding animals from elsewhere. I would say 100%. Another thing to ask is, how would anybody know what Jesus did? Really? Like, can you be sure of anything that Jesus did? Can you be sure that there was a Jesus? Or maybe there was a guy, Jesus. Can you be sure he was anything special at all? How can you be sure? What is so convincing? Could you prove it in a court of law, do you think? Could you prove these resurrections and walking on water, etc. in a court of law? Is that the kind of evidence you think you've got? It's so strong. Jesus would kill an animal like Cain killed Abel with a rock. Yeah, you would have to just beat them over the head and then cut their throats or something like that. Sounds very unlike what I would consider the Prince of Peace to do. You know, even Jesus in the Bible said that it was not good. Something like 
After the sin, he permitted eating certain animals. Like, cool story. Fucking, okay. Well, I disagree with that, Jesus. That was a really bad move. And look at the amount of suffering and death that has been caused by you not just telling people, eat plants instead. You don't need to eat animals. What a bad move, Jesus. People swear on a Bible in court. Always found it strange. It's absolutely ridiculous. If someone put that thing in front of me and says, swear on this Bible, I would laugh. I'm like, what in the fuck is the point? Why? I didn't give a shit about this book. Like, maybe there's some interesting little parts here and there, but do I think that this book is anything special or this religion is anything special? No. There's 10,000 religions out there. Everybody thinks they've got the word of God. Everybody's word of God contradicts everybody else's word of God. So I believe in none of the 10,000 and most people who are, everybody who's religious doesn't believe in 9,999 of them. So we're very close to agreeing on everything really. And it's just nuts. James, I've always wondered, do I need to know the Bible to be an active animal activist? Well, I think there's two answers to that. You can either get really good at learning the religious arguments in favor of being vegan, which there are many, such as thou shalt not kill, and the Garden of Eden was vegan, to name a couple. That's one way. But what I have found is that then they just say, well, what about in this chapter? Well, what about we have dominion? Blah, blah, blah. And I fucking hate arguing about who has the better verse of the fairy tale. I think it's so stupid. So I decided to supersede that move by just learning how to argue that religion in general is ridiculous. Ridiculous. When it comes to if you believe that these things are miracles and this is the word of God. Like, you know, there are things about religion that might be good. Community and some good messages and things like that. But you can have that without all these beliefs in fairy tales. Um, James, take a deeper look into the Urantia book. Fascinating take on Jesus. I'm not interested, to be honest, Patrick, but I appreciate the recommendation. Yeah, exactly. Thou shalt not kill unless you walk on all four and have fur, feathers, horns, beak, or gills. Exactly. Um, but... Yeah, it's good to know a few things, Chantel. We often see a picture of Jesus holding a lamb and I would never think he would kill it. He's holding it. Look, did you watch my stream last night? Last night I showed a video of a farmer talking about killing animals while scratching this beautiful lamb, one of the animals she's planning to kill. Now, would Jesus be doing the same in this photo that everybody shows of him? Which isn't an actual photo. It's just a fucking painting about a story character. Everyone's scratching. Uh, Jesus scratching. And then later, he, we're supposed to think that this Prince of Peace, the Lamb of God, goes and slaughters the Lamb. That's what Pierce thinks Jesus would do. And he's like, go Jesus. Good guy. Yeah, slaughter those stupid animals, Pierce. Those stupid animals who feel pain and suffer exactly like we do. So dumb. Well, Christspiracy, which just launched to, I have to say, truly diabolical reviews, claims to be an exclusive story about Jesus Christ that's never been told before. I would dare to suggest there's a reason for that. Well, Kip and Cameron join me now. Gentlemen, uh, thank you for joining Uncensored. Um, is this all a bit of a joke, this one? Is this like literally you're laughing at people? The joke is people like you, Pierce, who have all the facts in front of them, who see healthy vegans right here, who don't slaughter animals to survive. And the joke is that you pretend it's not possible and they don't exist. And it's a fucking bad joke, dude. Uh, no, definitely not a joke. That's for sure. But your pretext is that Jesus was a vegetarian and might have been crucified because of his vegetarianism. I mean, on what possible planet do you base that on? Uh, the film doesn't say that he was crucified to be in vegetarianism, but there is a massive thing in the film that happened four days before he got crucified, which is a cleansing of the temple that's historically documented. And the film explores what happened at that and what were the intentions of not only Jesus, but the Nazarene movement at that time and giving it complete context. Uh, it's been mistranslated. And it's a powerful, powerful uh, reveal that will really transform uh, Christianity and people who everyone from scholars, theologians, archaeologists, early Christian historians who know about this, who have seen this and explored this with an open mind, 
they say this is massively, massively groundbreaking, and um, it's going to really be a new chapter for Christianity. Okay. Uh, just to answer the question, I'm finishing the last little bit of a chickpea curry with um, TBP. So I just want to say something about what you said. No, Pierce does not care about honest discussion gig. You are 100% correct about that. He just, he just, he is strong enough in speaking with people and controlling the back and forth that he can make it look like he is winning a debate. But anybody who can see the actual conversation that's happening and see that he's leaving questions unanswered, he's bringing up random points, he is deflecting many times, can see that Pierce would get schooled by anybody who really knows their shit. These guys are saying, Kip and Cam, the creators of the documentary, are saying this is going to change Christianity. So I want to say another thing. I think it's so good what they're doing. Even though I think religion is ridiculous. I think the efforts they guys, these guys have gone to and I think the impact it might have, you know, it could be a really big impact. Like they're saying, it could be groundbreaking for Christianity. Imagine that. Imagine that. There's billions of Christians. Imagine if this documentary had a serious impact and some of the higher up people in the cult decided we should adopt this. We've done the research. What they're saying is true. We should be more like Jesus and not eat animals or like go with his teaching, which is to be kind, not cruel to animals. How good would that be? It would be phenomenal. So just because I have a different approach, which I also think is important. I think what these guys, cause look, they're not going to convince every vegan. They're not going to convince every Christian to go vegan. And I'm not going to convince every Christian that, that they shouldn't be Christian. You know what I mean? That it's like not based in reality. But, and a documentary like this is, it's got a lot of potential. You've, you've all seen what their other documentaries have done. Cowspiracy, What the Health. Kip has been on a fucking rampage spreading the vegan message in all these different ways. He's a genius. He's doing so well. And yeah, I think this one's gonna be big too. Here's what I don't get. I've done a bit of research myself with my team. Um, this is, you may call it biblical scholarship, I guess. Uh, Luke 24, 41 to 43, Jesus ate fish. Jesus also served fish to his followers, Matthew 14. And he caused the fishermen's nets to be filled on two different occasions, Luke 5 and John 21. The purpose of catching the fish was to sell them so they could be eaten. Jesus also cooked fish for his disciples, uh, John 21, 9. So he clearly ate a lot of fish. <laughs> yeah, well, Pierce, let me say I'm a Christian myself. I was uh, baptized in the church and I've learned and read those stories my whole life. In fact, it led me to be a fisherman myself for many, many years, uh, hunter, all the things. I'm the least likely person to go on this journey and start to ask some of these questions. But what I will say is when you look deep enough into some of those stories, which we do in this film, and I highly encourage you to see it, uh, these fish stories start to become quite a bit fishy and certainly raise a lot of questions, namely that the word translated as fish is three different Greek words, two of which just simply mean to relish something uh, just eaten on bread. And in Jesus' own retelling of the feeding of the 5,000 with the fish, he himself in Matthew 16 verse 9 says, don't you remember when I multiplied the loaves? And doesn't mention the fish at all. And that's Jesus' own words. Multiple times throughout the scripture, the same thing occurs, as well as the first uh, uh, early church fathers who had the original documents in front of them. They don't mention the fish in these stories. So at minimum, we're not saying anything. We're just asking questions. Why is there this discrepancy? Well, you all said you all. I, I want to touch on that. And Miss Infinity just sort of summarized what I'm about to say pretty well. Imagine using the Bible as a reliable reference. Look what happens when people use the Bible. Right now, Kip and Cam are saying, there's been a mistranslation. It actually was this word. You know, it's meant to say this. And if you go back, this is what it says, and we can prove this, right? And then some other guy's going to interpret it and say, no, it's supposed to say this. And some other guy's going to say, no, it actually says this. It is so left open for interpretation. If you are going to even bother to interpret this old book, that is nothing special in my opinion at all. So there's this really good quote. It's something like, be careful reading health books. 
you might die of a misprint. So, look, here's a fucking perfect example. If God was God, knows everything, can do anything, first of all, why is he spending time turning water to wine and not ending child rape, just as an example? And then on top of that, why would you put your word into this book that has so many different ways of being interpreted? Why would you do such a bad way of getting this message out to everyone? And it's obviously terrible because there's 10,000 religions. And then there's people like me who need more evidence than just, but chapter 10 says resurrection, right? So where, why? Why would you do such a poor thing? Why wouldn't you do something more, you know, convincing? Um, and yeah, it's interesting what they're saying. Like, you could die of a misprint. Animals are dying because of a misprint. It was supposed to say something else, not fish. It was supposed to say fish weed or seaweed or some sort of sea vegetable thing. I can't remember exactly what he said. Or just some sort of relish that is meant to be spread on bread. They're the original translations. But everybody, everybody, most people who eat animals and say, but Jesus ate animals, they haven't even read the Bible. Most Christians haven't even read the Bible. They don't even read the book that they base their foundation of ethics and life on and afterlife they don't even fucking read the whole thing so they're, they're like man that's crazy in itself anyway all right let's keep going i was saying he was a vegetarian but you've got no actual evidence that he didn't eat fish have you in fact all the evidence in the bible points to the opposite well, even, Pierce, before even going into that, that's only really scratching the surface of what this film actually is, as Kip was saying. This film has a deeply historical context. What we go into is that well, the if it's original true, uh, domestication... It doesn't have any historical context well, if it's a load of old baloney, does it? I mean, you go on to talk about meat, for example. Oh, no, no. I mean, G Jesus attended Passover in John 2, 13, John 5, 1, and Matthew 26, right. 17 to 30. Jesus would have been in disobedience of the law need a if he'd not eaten the Passover meal, which included meat. So the truth is, he, he not only right, ate well, fish, Pierce, Pierce, he, you, he, he ate meat. Yeah, Pierce, I've read the Bible front to back myself. I've obsessed over this for the last 10 years. And enti my entire life was based on scripture. And uh, I wear WWJD on my, on my wrist. Mm. I ask, what would Jesus do? What would James do? He would go vegan and tell everybody else to do the same just do about every moral and ethical dilemma and this was just a carry on from my natural inclination in my life to understand what Jesus would do about certain scenarios and certain situations and what I can say is that the Passover meal if you read in the scripture it says nothing about him eating a lamb it's not mentioned in the scripture and in fact what it does say is that he went to uh, join everyone for his last supper and uh, Pierce what was served at the last supper do you remember well you, why do you tell me what you think was of course you don't remember because you don't know because you probably aren't anywhere near as studied as these guys are on your own religion. Served. Veggie burgers? Well, it says in the scripture, bread. MTC Crazy, what's up? Have you heard about the Volcano James for cannabis vaping? I have heard of and I have used. <laughs> bread. <laughs> bread in the, in the juice of grapes. Bread. And so that's good. Well, you, Let's why go back you tell bit. me what you think was served? Veggie burgers? Well, it says in the scripture, bread. Bread, <laughs> bread in the, in the juice of grapes, bread. And so that was in its own way a very interesting telling. Again, it raises a lot of questions. Why is the Passover originally called well, the Feast of Unleavened Bread? Well, you think Jesus only lived? Veggie burgers would have been a mad last supper. No oh, bread. Uh, well, Jesus. Jesus could live off bread, bro. Yeah, if he wanted, it's Jesus. Jesus said man does not live on bread alone. Uh, so, right, but so it, he it, clearly did. Even, he lived he off bread, to, fish, meat vegetables fruit like i just have to say when i hear this like when i hear these guys talking about what this guy ate it just reminds me of like two adults arguing over fairy tale you know like who think it's real and no offense to either of them actually like because it is what it is they're brought up in their cult i'm just being honest this is how i see it right it is what it is they're brought up this way and they just believe it and it just, it trips me out to see it, like from my perspective, thinking, what the hell are you guys talking about? Even if this dude existed, you couldn't either be sure what he ate, really. Like, so what is this conversation? And who cares? Like everybody else, there's absolutely zero evidence 
that you produce, which has been historically well, proven to be correct, that, they, you, that he was anything but a he, 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 fish and meat loving normal eater. You just want, you just what you guys yeah, want him you, you because of your because of your we, history, we history. You guys want him to be a vegetarian so badly. You're now prepared to twist the no, actual Pierce, Bible to do Pierce. that. Isn't it funny that what he's talking about, like you guys want Jesus to be a vegetarian so bad, you're willing to twist the Bible? Does it really sound like these guys are twisting the Bible? The ones that are promoting peace, which isn't that what you just called him, the Prince of Peace, where Pierce, you are promoting slaughter, you are promoting throat slitting, you are promoting slavery, you are promoting raping animals, taking their children from them, killing children a lot of the time, eating bird periods, chopping their heads off when they don't produce enough eggs for you anymore. That's That's... You think that these guys saying Jesus was peaceful, even in his diet, is twisting the story in their favor. And you don't think that you guys do that. You don't think that you guys who are obsessed, obsessed with killing, obsessed with eating flesh, psychopaths, all of you. You don't think you guys might be just altering how you read it, or maybe it's been altered over time to fit your narrative, this big club you guys are all in, the death cult, my opinion, way more likely. Redlocks, what's up? Welcome back. I don't sing, Julie, but vegan raps on the way. And what's up? And thanks. Uh, uh, vegan equilibrium brings not peace, but a sword. Sometimes you need a sword, bro. Pierce, Pierce, let me let me actually correct that. That's not true. My entire life uh, was based. God, God is real in the sense of San Israel. So here's the thing. I I could definitely be more convinced that God is real. You know that there's some God out there. I'm not convinced. I think about it quite a bit actually, and I'm interested in it. And maybe it's the case, and I've had some really weird experiences in my time. And, you know, maybe on some level deep down, I do believe that whether, whether I have good evidence for it or not, maybe that's my own shortcoming. I'm not, I'm not really sure if I, how I really feel about it. Um, you know, because then who created that God? Like, it's just a weird... There's too many unanswered questions for me to say, I believe this. But, um, you know, sometimes I think about it and... I'm thankful to, to maybe myself, maybe nothing, but I'm, I say like, thanks God, or, oh, and I mean it sometimes, but um, I don't have this consistent belief that there's this overseeing presence that can manipulate our reality if he wants. Um, sometimes I think that, but yeah. Anyway, um, I could be, you know, I'm open to that, but I'm not open to fairy tales, believing in fairy tales and thinking you have the word of God just because someone told you that this is, book is the word of God. Here you go. Word of God. Promise. How do you know? Read it. Fucking says it in chapter seven. So that's ridiculous to me. How stoned was I when I had these experiences? Some I was very high and some I was absolutely stone, stone cold sober and had been for months. So... You know, I've had some crazy, crazy, weird, unexplainable shit happen. And maybe there's explanations. I mean, there has to be explanations, but not to me. Not based on what I understand of reality. Uh, some weird shit has been going on in my life over the years. But, um, yeah, you know, that's a very, they're two different claims, right? To believe in God and to have religious beliefs. It's again, on not only scripture and I was a gospel musician, but also... Um, I was a deeply uh, a meat eater. I worked at a barbecue restaurant in my teens. I was a hunter and a fisherman. I'm the mm. least likely person to get on this road. Many psychedelic experiences, Jay. Maybe too many. And in fact, the more I read the scripture, the more I didn't want to believe Whoa. it. Much like Julie, I was violently abused under religion. Violently abused? Fuck. That's fucked up. Sorry to hear. Uh under religion you're like you mean at your church or something or because of somebody's religious beliefs they felt they had the right to do something fucked up 
I was never sure why God would make you want to find him in thousands of different religious texts that he might be in rather than just put his teaching within you. Yeah, or like if you're going to write it in a book, just write it on a piece of paper that, or like, you know, uh, yeah, write it on a piece of paper and I'll read it when I can read, you know, or something like anything that you know it's him. Like it's got to be convincing. God should know. A lot of people won't be convinced by the way that he has tried to convince like, how can you not know that shit if you got... Sometimes I think about God and I think maybe God did his best or did its best or did her best. But maybe God just isn't that awesome, actually. Like, you know, maybe God fucked up, made a mistake. Maybe he was, like, mixing a recipe and accidentally put ego in or suffering or something. And um, maybe God isn't so perfect. I mean, it looks that way it's pretty clear if God if this is God's idea of perfect <clears throat> that is scary you uh, there were many times that I became very very uncomfortable with this conversation and questioned it deeply but it became so overwhelming the evidence that we have not only in the scripture themselves when you get to the original Hebrew translations what in the Greek translations which is what we go into the film in this film we talk about how the literal words of Jesus when he said den of thieves when he went into the temple which at the time was a massive slaughterhouse for animal sacrifice he said something else about what was going on there than the den of thieves uh, something much more condemning which we reveal in the film and i highly recommend that you see it it's completely transformed my perspective and hold up but god doesn't talk to you from golden zen if you're not having auditory hallucinations you're doing it wrong if you are having auditory hallucinations you might i would recommend speaking to a pro about that what do you mean bro first of all what makes you convinced that it is from god and not just in your head you know how can you be sure I want answers. What is your evidence? And overall, I'll tell you this, that it, it's so undeniable when you see... What a question, Julie. Do the animals know the difference between God and Satan? <sighs> That's interesting. The scriptural evidence along with no, it's, the historical evidence. it's really not. Evidence. I found it very easy to deny. I think the people in denial, with with respect. Did you see? The, did you the, see the? Did you the, see the, the film? Yeah. yeah. Did you see the, the film? Yes, of course. The people. What a liar! Did you see the film? Yeah. You saw the film? Yeah, of course. It's so obvious the way one that he has been talking to these guys that he hasn't seen it. Otherwise, he would have mentioned in the movie, in the documentary, at this bit. Da -da -da, he didn't do any of that, and then he's just like. He got asked something like this earlier and ignored it. And then this time, watch him again. Well, evidence along with no, it's, it's really not. I found it very easy to deny. I think the people in denial, with with respect. Did you see the? Did you the, see the? Did you the, see the, the film? Yeah. yeah. Did you see the, the, the film? Yes, of course. The people in denial are you two, aren't you? Shut the fuck up! I don't believe he saw shit. He wouldn't. He wouldn't watch it. He thinks he can just get these vegans with the easy shit he always tries. What about bees? Do you eat, do you eat uh, almonds? Do you eat uh, avocados? I mean, you're the ones in denial. You want this to suit your narrative that we should all be... Um, interesting Luther, kind of. Like, you wouldn't describe yourself as a Christian, but you feel you have more respect and connection to Jesus after seeing the film. It makes sense to me that the Prince of Peace was sent up for the animals. Obviously, otherwise he's not so great at being the Prince of Peace. You know, doing a good job maybe for humans or something. But if you're not sending up for animals getting stabbed to death, yeah, that's pretty important. Um, and, you know, that's what these guys are saying. This is kind of the revelation they brought is like, yeah, he was an animal rights activist, it sounded like. And he stormed into a temple and screamed about a slaughter a sacrificial slaughter or many sacrificial slaughters and four days later he was crucified so that's what these guys are saying and yeah i guess in a way i feel more connected to this character of jesus but also i'm not even anywhere near convinced that any of this is true at all vegans and vegetarians and yet by trying to pull jesus christ into this and twisting the actual words of scripture from the bible I think you're doing yourselves a disservice. Where, 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 have, where have we twisted the words of scripture? Can you provide an I've example? I've literally read passages where it's quite clear he ate. Yeah, I wouldn't have. 
when Pierce, like Pierce barely gives people an opportunity to talk. So if I was Cameron, I wouldn't have said, I wouldn't have been asked a question by Pierce, by Pierce and then responded with a question and sent the mic back to Pierce. He said, um, let's have a look again. From the Bible, I think you're doing yourselves a disservice. Where, 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 have, where have we twisted the words of scripture? Yeah, so he's already explained where he's, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to have a hate session on camera at all. He's doing a great job here. Uh, he really defended his points well, I thought, but um, I wouldn't have said where have we twisted the words because he's already explained a couple of areas where he thinks. So I would have just again drilled the point we haven't twisted any words, Pierce. I've already explained this to you. It's you guys who don't understand your own scriptures. We've been studying this and the script that, and going back on this exact topic and these exact verses for five years. Okay, we have a lot of people high up in your religion that are agreeing with what we found and they're saying this is groundbreaking news. That's what I would have focused on there. Sure, can you provide an I've example? I've literally read passages where it's quite clear he ate fish and meat. Well, no, so you, you mentioned Luke, right? Well, how come in multiple translations of that Luke verse that you mentioned, it says he ate honeycomb and fish. The honeycomb is omitted multiple times throughout all trans... There's so many translations where that's omitted. Why is that omitted? Also, the early church fathers that quote that verse, they don't mention the fish. There's many, many of the early church fathers that don't mention that he had fish. And in fact, that word that's used for fish there... Give me one piece of evidence is, that again, he was... Give me one piece of it. You say it's an historically important film. Give me one piece of evidence mm -hmm. that proves that Jesus was a vegetarian. Well, again, we're not here to prove that Jesus is, is a vegetarian. What, what? We're here to raise really important give me questions one that fact have it. That suggests What's that? A, give me one fact that establishes he was a vegetarian. Well, here. Yeah, here, here's something that suggests uh, uh, something worth considering, which mm. is that Jesus. Um, actually, let's just keep going for a sec. Jesus' own brother, James the Just, that everyone knows, in multiple historical documents, in the first paragraph that describes him, it describes that he never ate flesh. From the time of his birth, he never ate flesh. So this his is Jesus. brother. Did you guys hear that? James the Just. James is represent Jesus' brother, apparently. Vegan. Fucking what a boss. Represent the Jameses. He was better than Jesus. If Jesus wasn't a vegan, Jimmy was number one. <laughs> Love that shit. Maybe I will get into this religion. His own brother. So Sorry, so just to be clear, his brother was a vegetarian, you're saying. So that means Jesus was. Who took on the movement after Jesus got crucified, who carried on the same movement that Jesus was part of, he carried right, it on. Right, but if I James. said, if yeah. you... Exactly. I never heard anybody mention James the, the Just before. And I should have known about this guy because one, I'm very interested in this whole religious thing. And two, my name's James. So this guy needs, he needs to be talked about. I'm going to do some study. Some translations call Jesus the day star and others say the opposite. That Lucifer is the day star. So lost. James was vegan. Boom, boom. Yeah, Viv Vivian. Thank you, Pierce, for promoting the film. Clap emojis in the chat for Pierce. James the Judge. Ah, that's one of my one of my aliases, Jimmy the Judge. If you guys did a movie, if you guys did a movie and the pretext was I'm a murderer, and when I got you on to talk about where's your evidence, you went, well, your brother murdered someone. That's not great evidence. He, he made a great point there. Well, it's not just it's not just James either. The forerunner of the movement, John the Baptist, was known in multiple historical sources to eat only plant-based foods. What's that got and to do with also, Jesus? You're just naming other people. Well, because Jesus, because Jer Jesus carried on the movement of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was out in the wilderness giving a replacement. Where is a single quote from Jesus ritual, through ritual cleansing. that suggests he was he was a practicing? Yeah. I don't think they answered this question well. Thanks for the claps to pierce everyone, you legends. I don't think this was answered well. The question was very specific. What is your evidence that Jesus was a vegetarian? So I think the first bit was decent. He's trying to make the point. That's, that's not what I was asking for. Uh, sorry, that's not what the movie was for. The movie isn't just to prove Jesus was a vegetarian. But like, if you are trying to say that or something like that, make your case. Now's your time, you know, be like, all right, I'll tell you. So here's what we learned. The furthest dating back of these records is this. This is the agreed upon by the highest scholars in 
Christianity, the most reputable source. And the original translation of this says blah, 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 blah. So this is the best evidence until proven otherwise or something better has been shown. Until then, we go to the, the furthest source we can and this is what it says and that's why we think whatever we are trying to say here. Think vegetarian, you don't have one. The whole movie is based on a completely spurious pretext for which you have zero evidence. You've done well, it to make money and to capitalize on the big Christian market. As a Christian myself, I find that quite offensive. You need to- You got it, Julie. This movie is about how would Jesus kill and slaughter animals? And um, it's also to expose what Jesus was doing four days before he was uh, crucified. Yeah. Watch the film you first the off film. and you'll see there's overwhelming evidence in there proving not just vegetarian of what he was about in the movie. That, that was a really good answer. What It would have been great to say right at the start. You know, after we're not trying to prove Jesus was vegetarian, but if you guys watch this film, guarantee you'll all be convinced because we set it all out in the documentary. Promote the documentary a bit more might have been better. I just asked you to give me one and piece of... True. I just asked you to give me one bit of evidence which proves he was a vegetarian. You couldn't give me one. Well, I'll say... I need to read that. Official E Dirty comes with the facts. God is either not all knowing, not all loving, or not all powerful. He can't be all three. 100%. So what do you think? I think God is not all powerful. If there's a God at all. I hate to think God is not all loving. I prefer to think he created heaven. He created a garden of Eden. And then it got corrupted by some other God or something like that. Because just because we've got a God of this universe doesn't necessarily mean that that's the ultimate God. And um, maybe some other God came, put a hack to the system, put in a virus and, you know, who knows? Say this in the movie, we, we bring up the gospel of the Ebionites, which scholars, there's a consensus that this was an original document, the original Hebrew document of the gospel of Matthew that the Ebionite tribe used, the Ebionite movement. And these are the people that followed James the Just, Jesus's brother. And they have an original uh, statement from Jesus that says, he, I do not want to eat this Passover lamb with you. Okay, that's interesting. But what does that mean? They have an original statement from Jesus saying, I don't want to eat this Passover lamb. That's where I just get totally lost. I'm like, what do you mean an original statement from Jesus? How do you know? What's, what is authenticating this? Jesus, the son of God, Jesus is what we're talking about here. Prove that to me. And what, what has convinced you that that is fact? You know, that's where I just check out of all this kind of thing. This is a, a document that we don't have anymore. Again, your peers uncensored. I would, I would suggest, and many scholars suggest, that this document was censored a long time ago, wow. 2,000 years ago. Conspiracy. To be so it's a, we, we've lost this. Ep so there's been a well, global, exactly. there's been a global historical 2,000 year conspiracy to prevent your, your version of events being proven. It's terrible. Well, it's not our, no, it's not our version, Pierce. I would say it. He's such a fucking idiot. Floris, life is amazing. Love and life, mate. Really. We've got a rave on this weekend. And this DJ who we don't really know and so we don't really listen to, so we're not excited about, pulled out and re they got replaced with one of our favorite DJs. It was like God was smiling on us. Praise Jesus. It's Christ, it was, it's Christ's own word. How about you, Flores? How you doing? He said, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, in uh, Matthew when he's quoting Hosea 6.6. 6. And he says, go and learn what this means. And I encourage every Christian to really take the time and go and learn what this means. Okay, because, let me again, ask you. I had the op I, I'm asking the same questions as you. Okay. I mean, I, I suppose the obvious question is, is, why does it matter anyway? Right? Putting aside whether it is true or not, why does it matter? Well, I have a question for you, Pierce. How, Dude, no, no offense, Keith, I love you, but no, what a great question Pierce asked. I feel like he, that was almost like he was on our team there to ask such a open question about what is, what does it matter if Jesus thought it was wrong to eat animals? That was like, thanks mate. Why it matters is, Everybody wants to know what would Jesus do? Jesus would be vegan because 
Vegans are the only ones who are treating animals ethically. And that's what Jesus would have done too. Fucking bomb. But yeah, I don't know why Kip missed this one. I suppose the obvious question is, is why does it matter anyway? Right? Putting aside whether it is true or not, why does it matter? Well, I have a question for you, Piers. Do you feel that Jesus, how would Jesus kill an animal? Do you think Jesus would kill an animal? Because at the time, back in the day, he would be the one who killed it, uh, the animal. I've no so idea. How would but Jesus I, I, kill an animal? I've no idea, but given most human just, beings... Just, just think, think about I, it. Visualize I'm, how that I'm would I'm about that to ask you. Let me ask really the question. Visualize. Let me ask the question. I, I think given that most human beings of that time probably would have killed animals to eat them at some stage... I wouldn't see it as completely fanciful but, that Jesus may have killed an animal. But, but how? What, 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 would he, what would he do? Can you... And people had slaves and it was very normal. I wouldn't... If I saw Jesus with slaves, like, yeah, what? You would still think he was the ethical guy, the Prince of Peace? Or you'd be like, fuck, Jesus had slaves? Kind of makes me think twice about the guy. Yeah, that's how we think when you guys say Jesus was an animal abuser. Sounds ridiculous, right? Why would you look up to somebody like that? Axel, what King of EDM is my favorite? I tend to le le lean towards dubstep. I, we just love trance, Psytrance. And the king of Psytrance is Asterix. Give us a visual of what Jesus would he do. He would do what everybody else did at the time. So then if he would do what everybody else did, what's so special about him? He would have slaves, he would eat animals and slaughter them well why do we care then if, if vegans already now are better than what he was you know and people who don't have slaves now and think slavery is wrong if he was just doing what everybody else was doing it makes no sense How? which is what which is would, he, would jesus use a knife would he break the, the break Possib the, possibly the neck? yeah How i don't know it wasn't there but it? it's quite possible yeah why you, wouldn't you it can be? imagine jesus you, you, jesus holding the lamb the beautiful picture you can imagine well let me ask you to a question a all right let me, let me ask it. you to a question back are you both practicing <laughs> vegans or what are you i'm gonna have to have to agree with that axel gig is god Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Well, I, one, I, of the, one of the one of the many things. So you're both. I am now just, because of what I learned. Okay. You're both. Yeah, you're absolutely. both vegans. Okay. So do you eat avocados or almonds? Or oh both? my god. <laughs> who was expecting this? Me and probably every single vegan who has ever watched a Pierce Morgan interview. He always does this, and it has been responded to. So the best response I've seen, there's two. One was to Pierce's face by Joey, who just def refuted his argument. And then Isaac from Ask Yourself YouTube channel has a, how to exactly respond to Pierce Morgan on this question, like less than a 10 minute video, I think. And uh, watch it. We're gonna watch it after this. <laughs> we're, we're ready for this one. Yeah. I was doing a, uh, a documentary for about a year and a half on glyphosate and in pesticides, specifically okay. glyphosate. I just asked you a question. Did you do your research? It's, not, it's, like, it's like being against... Joey, Joey. That's another thing we'll do. We'll watch um, what Joey did today. Against strawberries. Guys, I'm not against guys, strawberries. Guys, I'm guys, against the I'm pesticides. I'm sure you've done lots of stuff. I'm it. against the glyphosate. It's a very simple question. Do you eat avocados and almonds? The answer is, yeah, I do. And he'll say, but bees are killed and... Fucking bees are killed, yeah, and animals are killed for potatoes, and it all happens like this. Is he suggesting we shouldn't eat any food? What is his argument here? We know animals die. Vegans are every day, multiple times a day, any vegan talking about veganism is dealing with this question. We're not hypocrites. This is just how things have to be right now because there aren't enough people like us who care about animals enough to improve the conditions for even the crop deaths. Animal eaters are responsible for 10 times more crop deaths plus the hundreds of animals each one of you eat every single year. Those deaths too. So how do you think this is a slam dunk on vegans? Everybody thinks this is the best thing to say against vegans. You are incriminating yourself to look even worse. They're the statistics. They're the facts. And if there was a better solution, vegans would take it. And when we are killing animals in crops, it is to protect our crops so that we can survive as a society. Should we starve? Is that a better option? So we have to do what we've got to do. And if humans were consistent, if humans were relentlessly destroying your crops and they couldn't be reasoned with, 
you would have, and the only way to deal with it was self-defense to the point of death, you would do it because that's what you have to do. So it's completely different. It's a form of self-defense. It's an extension of self-defense. You're killing for self-defense to, to protect your property, which is what's keeping you alive. Verse, raping mothers to breed their babies into a life of slavery right from the first moment they're born. They are already owned. They're owned already while they're still in the mother's stomach. These are just products to these people. With, they come with barcodes a little bit later in the process. Chunks of their bodies wrapped up and barcoded. So um, they are born into this slavery life and then they're murdered for their flesh in the world's biggest holocaust. And you force them into gas chambers and you slit their throats and you do it as fast, you, do, you fatten them up as fast as possible. The ones that you eat, pierce, live lives of hell in factory farms. 99% of animal products come from these places. Lives of hell. And then they get slaughtered. And you think that the slam dunk is on vegans? You guys should be ashamed of yourselves. We're trying our best and doing what's available. You guys aren't even fucking trying. You guys are just in a fucking big death cult. Sick. So sick. You just don't know how sick you are. It's fucking scary to live amongst you freaks. Piers, I actually don't eat avocados. I don't enjoy... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, almonds. I don't enjoy almonds. I do I do enjoy avocados. And in fact, because okay, of the question okay. that you're asking... And, and, for and, many, many for many years, I, hand, I live in California. I handpicked my own avocados because of the atrocities okay, that happened to okay, the bees that you're okay. going to mention. But what you got to remember, Piers, what you got to remember, Piers, is the bees are actually for the honey industry and they're rented out to, to, the, to the avocado oh, industry. No, I know what just happens. Goes to show you that plant, I'm just telling plant, you, but in the, as plant you know... Plant agriculture isn't perfect. The reason I ask you Piers, is plant that... Agriculture the is not look, perfect. Let me explain. The reason yeah. I go on about this with vegans is vegans are the most self-righteous people. Okay, so just a small thing, but there's no way I would have... Well, I would have tried to avoid saying plant agriculture is not perfect three times. So when you're in an interview with peers like this, every sentence matters. I wouldn't have even wanted to say that once. Plant agriculture isn't perfect. I would have just reworded it like in, in a positive frame because... We are clearly on the positive side here in terms of reducing suffering, deaths, death and rights violations, improving the quality of like releasing land, um, having more land for all these things we need, way less water. Like the list is so long, I can't even bother to go through it right now. But you know what I'm saying? The amount of benefits are massive. People on God's earth. Uh, and whenever I ask them, do you eat almonds and avocados? Invariably, they eat one or the other or both. And they don't like to be confronted with. You eat them too, dude. And every fucking food comes with some casualties. The reality that in the production of their favorite foodstuffs, billions, literally billions of bees, the little guys, get exterminated. Billions. One other thing that non-vegans do a lot. Oh, peace out, Satan inside. Ah, oh, okay. Well, have fun um, with your kids. I hope you have a good day and enjoy the holidays. One other thing that non-vegans do all the time, when they talk about crop deaths, they always say like, and vegans are responsible for trillions of deaths kind of thing. Well, first of all, over how long, you know, like you can say any random number, but that's got to be relative to something for it to be meaningful. It could be over a million years, it could be over 10 billion years. Like it doesn't make sense. They never back it up with a proper statistic. And the way they always frame it is to make vegans look bad. And it does make vegans look bad to people who aren't very smart. So there's always this framing, like vegans are honest and we're trying to give honest facts and figures and we're trying to respond honestly and, and do our best to explain this ethical theory that we have adopted and evolved into later in our life. Where these guys just, their way of responding is to just make veganism look as bad as possible. Like, why are these guys who are responsible for so much less cruelty and death, obviously, why are these the guys on the defensive right now, defending their, defending their lifestyle, when this guy is all about factory farmed animals? Why are these vegans on the defensive? It's just because they, it's because Pierce knows how to dominate the conversation. That's the only reason. And so it, it shouldn't be like this though. This isn't how the conversation should go. They, Pierce should be on the back foot looking ridiculous.
Instead, and he is to me, he looks absolutely ridiculous to me and probably to all of you as well. But to other people, it's his little game is convincing, unfortunately. Right, and so Here's you that. are party, you are, hang on, you are party to mass murder. Mass murder. And I just wonder how you feel about that. Pierce, plant agriculture is not perfect, and it's because it's the no, agricultural system aren't has been perfect, dominated by it. Exactly. Said it again. I don't know why. And Pierce was like, yeah, he's not. Exactly. That's the point I'm making. He's not perfect. And it's like, cool. When What vegan says we are, literally, Cam has said that three times, we're not perfect. He's made a very big point of saying we're not perfect. But we're as close as you can get. We're doing our best. We're trying to be. And if we could be better, we would still be better. And the difference between our lifestyle and this guy who buys factory farmed flesh, even though it's all bad, you shouldn't be supporting the Holocaust in any way, whether they were living their life in a cage or even free roaming awaiting their slaughter date. The fact that this guy thinks our lifestyles are comparable because both aren't perfect is ridiculous. It's Vegans been dominated. Veganism no, is perfect. By you- anal- it's been dominated by... Yeah, but you see, this is the trouble. You no, no, make a whole listen. movie trying to prove something you can't prove about Jesus you're, being a you're, you're, vegetarian. Pierce, Pierce, and yet here Pierce, I have you, Pierce, you're doing what about, you you're doing cornered, what about cornered as mass murderers. No, it's there's not. The, no, it's there's not the, cornered, the real movie. Hey, Pierce, 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 well, there's an ethical well, way to eat an avocado. There's a way to do it right. No, but, and, and, okay. and, and it's hard to do it right. How because, many because, bees have died? Listen, because um, in understanding me, when did I, when did I, oh, you weren't asking me. But I'll answer you. I have focused on my, um, my like going to the gym consistently for the last two and a bit years because I was like I was doing almost nothing for a good couple of years before, um, or, or a little bits and pieces, but mostly not so much due to severe chronic pain. Um, thanks, Chantel. What did I say? I don't even remember. Alison, I'm sorry that people like Pierce are allowed to speak on a public platform. As I said in my description, if it was up to me, these guys would be separated from our peaceful society. Not that we live in one, but if we did, Pierce would look like a freak. If everybody was like animal abuse is wrong and Pierce came out saying all this shit, he would be in a psych ward where he should be. You know, and fuck, honestly, people should get their heads fixed before they go make any more purchases of buying flesh. You know, like it is mental and there are serious consequences to being so wrong about something so important there's only 0.04 how many bees have died to sate your goes hunger to plant agriculture yeah 64 percent of of the public funding goes to animal agriculture we don't have the money to do the innovation to yep. properly raise i just think guys avocados you- but guess what you can't ethically pierce can you ethically can you eth is there any ethical way to kill 90 billion animals per year to eat them. There Just is stop. an ethical way to eat an avocado. Why Very don't you ethical stop, way, is there an ethical way to kill 90 billion animals? Why don't you stop animals? feeding the mass murder of bees culture? That's all I'm asking you. That's what ask, it is. Ask, it. ask the honey industry. I tell you who would have looked after the I tell you who looked after the, after the little guys. Industry. I tell you who looked after the little guys. Jesus. He would have looked after the little guys. He absolutely, looked, he yeah, does. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. He'd be yeah. against glyphosate. That was awesome. Let's watch it again. It was funny. We looked after the, the little guys. Wait, wait. It's murder of bees culture. That's all I'm asking you. That's what ask, it is. Ask, it. ask the honey industry. I tell you who looked after the I tell you who looked after the little guys. I tell you who looked after the little guys. Jesus. He would have looked after the little guys. He Absolutely. Like, Fuck yeah, bro. That's what we're saying. That's what the whole movie is about. Congrats. You figured it out. You didn't even have to watch it. Good for you. So now what? Are you going to, what would Jesus do for your life and change your diet? Like vegans have been suggesting you to do for the longest of times. Or are you just going to be a fucking idiot and get a Big Mac on the way home? Um, Sean, what's up, bro? He is obsessed with bees. No, he's not. He, he's obsessed with trying to make vegans look like hypocrites and unfortunately that one thing that he says is enough for people to be like oh yeah see yeah yeah i don't need to go vegan which is ridiculous even if it was yeah bees and you are wrong for that it's like cool well you guys do that as well plus 10 times the crop deaths plus all the deliberate slaughters which is about one to three hundred each person murders of these sentient beings every year so cool bro bees yeah that's fuck we should all change that together right after we all go vegan yeah let's start with the easy shit
Yeah, exactly. This from a man who hates trophy hunters and loves animals, except for the ones he eats. Exactly. It's such, and that's what I wrote. I can't remember what my thing was, but it was something about him being a hypocrite. He's such a hypocrite. And like the thing that I, that I meant when I said he's such a hypocrite is, I don't think he's a violent guy. I think he's a stupid guy. You know, he's a hypocrite because if he's pressed on why he has these ethics and like, why are you against trophy hunting? Why are you against eating dogs and slaughtering dogs? Really, if he's honest about the answers, it's because he understands these animals don't deserve to be at the hands of our suffering if they don't need to be. Like, if we, we, we shouldn't hurt them, you know, obviously. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I just want this dude, like, it would be so amazing. Imagine if this dude actually went vegan and all these conversations one day changed this guy. Because that's how it happens. You know, you can only argue this shit for so long. He looks so stubborn and so ignorant, but it's got to be sinking in. Every time he sees vegans again, he's like, fuck, more vegans. These guys are still existing out there. And yeah, I know I keep talking shit about bees, but okay, there's way less deaths on a vegan diet. Let's be honest here. If he's honest with himself, but yeah, I don't think the guy wants to be honest with himself. That's the, that's the worst part about it. Yeah, Godzilla rules. I'm rapping on your track. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You'd be yeah. against glyphosate and pesticides. So you two, he looks after the little... All right, sorry, I got a bit lost. He's talking about looking after the little guys. So yeah, that's exactly what he should have done. Now, I don't know what fucking Kip was talking about here with glyphosate. That was kind of random, but anyway. I'll tell you what looked after the little guys. Jesus. He would have looked after the little guys. He absolutely, looks, he yeah, does. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. He'd be yeah. against glyphosate and pesticides. So you two, he looks after the little lamb that you, you two he'll should slit invoke, his throat and kill. You should invoke the spirit of Jesus Christ and stop eating avocados and almonds, and you should stop encouraging <laughs> the mass extermination of the little guys. Lord Trooper. We you, do. do you agree? We do. We do. And we, we would love to see that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Hang the on, little this is guys a big and moment. the big guys. All this is of a big them. moment. Thank <laughs> This is so dumb. He thinks that he caught them in a trap. But they're like, yeah, that's what we're doing. We're doing our best to protect all the little guys. Yeah. Why aren't you again, Pierce? You hypocrite? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I've got you to admit no, you've been committing that. mass murder and you're going to stop. No, I no, never, no, 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 we, we haven't. That. Been, no, no, that's no. not what we're saying, no. Pierce. We're saying that there's a there's there's unnecessary uh, killing that's happening yeah. in in all stages of agriculture. Well, so you can the, eat the, avocados the mass, is necessary. The, the majority it. of it is 90 billion. No. no, 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 Pierce. There is an ethical way to eat, eat an avocado without avocado. killing any bees. I'm... Bees die when they sting you, Pierce. The point is, is there's no ethical what? way around killing an animal to eat it. The animal has to die, and it has to go through suffering. Ninety-nine percent of all animals are factory farm, Pierce. Do you how, yeah. how much meat do you eat, Pierce? I mean, you know what, guys? You, you... Finally, finally, get him on the defensive. And what happens? He doesn't even get to finish his question and Pierce moves on because he's a master at this shit, manipulating the conversation. Let's watch that shit again. Around killing an animal to eat it, the animal has to die and it has to go through suffering. 99% of all animals are factory farm, Pierce. Do you, how, yeah. how much meat do you eat, Pierce? I mean, you know what, guys? Do you, do you eat the, factory you know farm what? meat? As a Christian, you're, you're, Pierce, Pierce, guys, guys, as a Christian, Pierce, as a, wait a minute. As a Christian, I forgive you both. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> well, Pierce, Pierce, you're a very, very sweet guy, and Thank I actually you. honor that, and I, and I think you're an awesome person. I, I know you love your cats, and That's I think that it's call. in your heart. I know you're against factory farming, yet you still eat factory farmed animals. Why do you do that? I like meat. What can I tell you? That is a great question, and that was a ridiculous answer. But it's the honest answer. That was fucking honest from the guy, at least. Why do I buy factory farmed animals? I like meat. Cool, well, <laughs> like... I like money, but I don't go slash people's throats for it and steal their wallet, you know? Like, how about have some empathy, dude? How about have some respect? What about my eyes, Julie? What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Chantel, animal liberation and veganism forever. You know what's up. And I'm not a hypocrite. I'm not a sanctimonious so, hypocrite. So, about, so, so, I'm not a sanctimonious hypocrite who preaches to people that you've got to leave animals alone, but quietly takes part, actively so, so, participates so in the mass slaughter of bees. So was Jesus Christ, uh, was, as a Christian, was Jesus a sanctimonious hypocrite when he went into the temples and disrupted the entire animal sacrifice system because they were murdering animals in the temple? Absolutely not, because he wasn't preaching. What a fucking legend. Cam just dropped a fucking bomb. Let's watch that again. 
uh, was as a Christian, was Jesus a sanctimonious hypocrite when he went into the temples and disrupted the entire animal sacrifice system because they were murdering animals in the temple? Absolutely not, because he wasn't preaching like you two do about being a vegetarian, because he wasn't a vegetarian. He wasn't preaching about it, but going into where they're sacrificing animals and making a whole scene and getting that shit shut down, that's, that's not as bad as these guys apparently preaching about veganism. Makes no sense, Pierce, as most things you say on this topic. So, unfortunately, your attempt Pierce, to like br said, bring this, him Pierce, into your Pierce, own this, sanctum this film, and hypocrisy doesn't work. Pierce this, this film goes, Pierce, this film goes so much deeper than that. You're only scratching the surface. Donna has come with some facts, too. Winning versus ethics. There's no argument here. Ethics wins every time. Exactly. I'm so sick of this debate. What debate? What? Vegans are right. Okay, now accept the reality and do what you're supposed to do as a good person, apparently, Pierce. That's it. This isn't a fucking debate. Animal rights, just like human rights, a logical extension of human rights. Slavery is wrong, not just when the victims have two legs and are humans. Slavery is wrong. Fucking simple. So obvious. Throat slitting is wrong. Not just if they have a human throat, but also if they have a cow throat. Throat slitting is wrong. You know what I mean? Pretty simple stuff. Surface. Guys, We're talking about listen, a historical a, event listen, where, uh, where Christ... Kip, Cameron, it's been, it's been very interesting talking to you. You haven't persuaded me. You need to watch the film. We're, 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 cool, film. we're cool done, Sam. Well, if you watch the film, let's no, listen, have it again. I was about to give you a plug. People can watch it themselves. It's a free world. Okay. Not, this show is called Uncensored. I've given you the platform. You've expressed yourselves forcefully. I disagree with your pretext completely. And I think there is a whiff of sanctimony and hypocrisy about the way that you take part in the slaughter of bees. But we will agree to disagree. And I wish you a very happy day. Pierce, one last thing from the beginning of the Bible to... I would have just been like, okay, Pierce, so you are disagreeing that animals deserve rights and you are going to continue paying for their rape, mutilation, torture, and murder. Well, you're a fucking piece of shit. And if I had power, you'd be in jail for all the abuse that you caused, knowing... ...to ask these questions without shutting them down. I promise you it's not as hypocritical as you think. You know what? It's I'm a gonna, very, very good question to I ask. Will, and it goes so much deeper than whether or not Jesus was a vegetarian. I will watch on my the way home tonight, the film, on my way home tonight, as I'm eating a Big Mac with large fries, I'll give it a thought. Guys... Of course you will. Of course you will, Piers. Many Big Macs have been eaten by you, haven't they? I've got to leave it there. After Thank you, you very much. the film, you might think twice. Kim, Kim Cameron, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you very much. I like that Kip got the last word there and it was a bloody good one. After you watch the film, you might think twice. Whoa, Kip has a lot of faith in this guy. That is amazing. And I don't know where it comes from, to be honest. Maybe it comes from the fact that it is just so hard to accept that otherwise intelligent people, you know, somewhat intelligent people, like people who can read and write and have had some life experience and uh, running a, a successful show. Like, if you guys can't just do it, just do what is obviously right, just end the slaughter, the slaughter that you contribute to. If you just can't even do that, then I, it's hard to find hope, honestly, because like, what he's doing? What he's doing? How much slaughter do you need to see? How many screams do you need to hear? Maybe you haven't heard or seen enough. Maybe that is the problem. I wonder how much slaughter Pierce has watched. I wonder if he's ever even watched a full hour of what happens to the animals he eats. Because it takes a bit of time. You need to watch it for a bit to understand it. Watching just one, one minute video, you forget about it. You forget about the experience, you scroll to the next video and before you know it, you forgot it ever was something you saw. But um, I think that if you spend some time, an hour or two, which is the least that the animals deserve, paying attention to the slaughter, watching some footage, watch Dominion, for example. Dominion has 10 hours of continuous gas chamber footage. So watch some of that. That's the apparently most humane way that pigs are gassed in Western world. Watch Dominion, exactly. 
And maybe you'll think differently. I've been to a gas chamber in the UK, Pierce, and in Manchester. It's a crazy place because you can... There's this slaughterhouse and there's this gate around it, right? This big metal gate, big metal fence. Yeah, big metal fence. I always get those two words mixed up. But there's this part of the slaughterhouse which is only like, if I remember correctly, about five meters from the fence and the slaughterhouse. And that is where the gas chamber is. And you can just stand there behind all these bricks and five meters back or however far, 10 meters maybe. And the screams are so loud. So that's crazy in itself. But on top of that, the area behind the slaughterhouse and just right on the trail Right, right where this slaughterhouse is, right where this gas chamber is, this, the building is right there. There's this walking trail where people are walking their dogs and shit, walking past these pigs screaming in a gas chamber. It's nuts. So yeah, people need to see. People need to see. <sighs> anyway, all right, now I said, uh, speaking of gas chambers, let's see what our friend Joey did today all right so any final thoughts on Pierce Morgan first of all Pierce is a massive hypocrite Pierce knows better and chooses to not do better Pierce is lost on a lot of topics and if he believes in religion but doesn't seem to really know anything about it that's just another example Pierce eats factory farmed animals and mocks their deaths and suffering Pierce puts out bad information about vegans to make our movement look weaker when in fact his arguments are pathetic and he just doesn't accept that fact. So he keeps saying the same shit, putting misinformation out there and it leads to a lot of suffering and death. And he doesn't give a fuck. So Pierce gets minus three trillion stars on my rating system. Now, Joey has been very busy today. Joey Carbstrong, I'm sure you all know Joey. And his team, or a small team of people, um, other activists, have gone into a gas chamber this morning. Fucking legends. But yeah, it was um, about five of them. I'm not sure if I should watch that or watch the live. I think we're going to watch Joey's video and we'll just skim through it because I'm going to bail pretty soon. Um, yes, exactly, Alison. Minus three trillion. Pierce is awesome at what, Andreas? Tell me one thing. Yeah, Joey, Joey has risked... Exactly. He's risked his freedom. He's risked his safety. He's risked his, a lot of stuff. And I hope it pays off. They are on a fucking rampage. Oh, oi. Joey has always been the realist. You know, Joey, Joey has always been like this. And yeah, people criticize activists all the time. Activists that they're jealous of, activists that are making a difference that they're not making, activists that have done way more than they have done in the time they've been vegan, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah, it's right here. Passing on the pipe. <laughs> Thanks. Um, fucking, exactly. People are fucking full of shit and Joey's a fucking good guy and if people disagree, well, I disagree with that. I think this, he's a fucking legend. Yeah, I probably will have them on my channel for an interview, Luther. Um, I've been in contact with both of them over the last six months about this documentary. I think Joey's going to die if he continues. He was close to getting gassed to death last time, wasn't he? I'll be honest, I haven't actually seen the documentary yet. I should watch it. Yeah, I don't know if it's... Last I checked, it wasn't available in Brazil, but I could probably get a copy, to be honest. I just don't fucking want to watch it because pig slaughter, screams, etc. Like, But I should watch it. Is the documentary live? Joey's documentary is at pignorant.com, right? Um, and you can, you, you can get information for where it is there. It's on Amazon Prime. 
I got to meet Joey. It was the best experience I've ever had. That's fucking awesome. I have had the pleasure of meeting Joey many times. All right, so let's just watch what they did today. That's, that's what we'll do. So, you can send me a link. All right, yeah, do it. Send in DM if you don't mind um, on Instagram. That'd be good. Joey's a dude. James and Joey should collab more. Totally, yeah. I have been busy with my own shit, and so is Joey, but I'm sure we'll do more stuff in the future. You know, both of us are not going anywhere. Not by choice, anyway. All right. Let's do it. Apparently, I should warn people. Ah, happy to Chantel. Apparently, I should warn people based on YouTube terms and conditions that... Actually, no, this isn't going to be graphic. Yeah, never mind. Take back what I said. All right, hold up. Here we go. Hmm, should we watch his comments? Probably a bunch of dummies. All right, we're live everywhere. All right, we're live, get used. All right, first of all, let me just set the scene a little bit. I haven't watched this, so I don't know what he's going to say, but just in case, like, I'll tell you what's going on at the side of the video. There, actually, wait, I'm sure he's going to do it. This video freezes? Ah. Terms of service, yeah, whatever it's called. Oh, his stream sucks. That is a fucking shame. I'm sure they got plenty of footage and can make a video out of it anyway. So it's not really worth watching. Let's give it a crack. Maybe we can just get out what he's doing. What right, everyone? Where's your sign? All right, we're currently, uh, we are currently locked down on a, on top of a gas chamber here in, um, at Cranswick Watson. The police have arrived. I want to show you why we're here. Down there is CO2 gas. They're about to torture thousands of pigs in this gas chamber today. They torture about 4,000 pigs to death a day in this gas chamber right here. All right? Now, look what they've got and done. After, this is a, sorry. These are padlocks. They put padlocks on the slaughterhouse, uh, on the gas chamber here because they're afraid of a little bit of transparency, which is why you have to force transparency with these animal torturers, because they won't willingly give it themselves. As you can see, they've gone as far as putting padlocks on the gas chamber to avoid anyone finding out about it. But luckily, we've already investigated it. Luckily, the footage is all online for everyone to watch, okay? Go to my YouTube channel. All right, so. <clears throat> Let me answer a few questions here in the chat. First of all, Joe was arrested. I didn't know that. Is that what happened? I mean, I assume, yeah, because look where he is, guys. He's on a fucking gas chamber in a slaughterhouse. They don't just let people in there. He's trespassed a slaughterhouse, which I'm all for. Fucking oath, Joey. And like, yeah, he's, he's stopping the operation. That's the point of him being there. Raise awareness for the gas chambers and stop like cause economic damage basically stop shit for a bit stop the killing for a little bit 4,000 pigs a day get slaughtered there imagine if it was 4,000 dogs a day you know but no pigs are actually a little more intelligent not that intelligence is what we should base on whether someone lives or dies but 4,000 dogs just imagine F imagine 4,000 five-year-old children because that's around the intelligence pigs have or, or four-year-old or still extremely intelligent fucking hellhole slaughterhouses and joey is there with his crew on top of a gas chamber so they're not going to be able to slaughter pigs and they're going to call the cops and joey's probably going to get well, i mean it depends it depends like we'll find out i guess what's going to happen is he going to get deported ah oh, fuck 
Hmm. Nah, couldn't be. Oh my god, that's actually fucked. If something like that was to happen. But I'm sure he's thought about all this and did made his decision. Channel right now. And the last video. If it was dogs, he'd be up on a pedestal. Exactly. So true. Yeah, I uploaded. Uh, it's called Second UK Gas Chamber Exposed in History. <laughs> Click on that video. You'll see what takes place inside this gas chamber. We're on top of the gas chamber right now. You'll be able to see exactly what takes place inside the gas chamber. I think the, the police officers here should also look it up. They should also look it up as concerned citizens. Uh, they should also see there's some police officers down here in the yellow here. Um, got five activists with me here, locking down as well. Re creating awareness. We're not really, we're just uh, standing up here. We're not really locking down, but we're, uh, we're trying to raise awareness because it's difficult to raise awareness when no one wants to be transparent. So, if I can just show you it all again, this gas chamber here. What a shame about the quality. They put seven pigs in each cage. They put seven pigs in each of those cages. And then they torture the pigs to death in CO2. Oh, you can fucking hear That's them. That's what they do. Wait, you can hear the pigs, but it doesn't mean they're getting slaughtered. But they're there, waiting the slaughter. Yeah, you can hear him screaming, exactly. At least the sound of Joey's upload, his live, is crystal clear. You can hear the pigs in the lair, Rich. They keep them there all night. And uh, if it wasn't for us being here, these pigs would be getting tortured right now. Yep. Tortured to death in CO2 gas. They suffer hor horrifying deaths in here. Yep. They defecate all over themselves in these gas chambers. They piss and shit themselves. They're terrified, these animals. They're terrified. And they're being tortured to death in England. Doing a great job. At Cranswick Booth in Watton. And, and the other gas chambers across the UK. Yeah. And the gas chambers across the US and Australia and Spain and, the, and Europe and Germany. They're torturing these pigs to death. And they think we're going to stand by while you torture pigs to death. You think we're going to stand by while Cranswick torture animals in their disgusting gas chambers? Absolutely disgusting shit. What a fucking legend. Shame on you, Cranswick. Shame on you making money off of animal torture and selling lies to the public. And shame on the public for buying the tortured bodies of these murder victims. So, as you can see here, these are little peepholes. That's a kill floor there. That's a kill floor. Um, you recognize, if you go to my, um, my YouTube channel, you'll actually recognize this kill floor. The red, blood red kill floor here. Have you, uh, uh, we're creating awareness. <laughs> we're raising awareness about the pigs who are being tortured in this gas chamber. I uh, left secret cameras in this gas chamber in uh, December last year and we released the, the footage to the Independent two days ago. And uh, so we're here to create further awareness. So we're currently streaming. Boom. That's what we doing. Fucking straight up. You guys are paying for torture, so we're here exposing it. Because... Thanks, baby. Because you guys hide it from the public and you lie about it and you say it's humane and you've created the RSPCA to also say it's humane and people think that they're 
stamp of approval on something means it's actually humane and it's not. So then someone like Joey, fucking random guy, you know, you know what I mean? Like falls into this rights movement and he has to go against these corporations and these unjust laws and these torturers, you know, there should be police in there doing that job and ending the animal torture. But no, the police are there to get Joey out of there. It's so backwards. The woman he's talking to is either a slaughterhouse. I, I think he's probably talking to a um, cop, was my guess. To my following. And we are raising awareness about an incredibly egregious animal torture issue that's happening in this gas chamber here and, and others as well. Uh, well, it's when I feel like we've raised awareness. Uh, um, would I ever do anything like this? I wouldn't not do it. You know, I, I think it's powerful and useful, but you got to fucking choose your battles, you know, because look, this issue isn't going anywhere anytime soon. And you, you need to, I think you only have so many shots. Something like this is very potentially going to affect your travel movements. It's going to affect maybe you can't speak at schools anymore. Um, you know, it can, it has an impact. And then again and again, maybe you go away in a jail for two years or so. I am all for people doing this. I think it's great. But when I'm making my own personal decisions about what kind of activism to do, I'm considering everything. Like, this is excellent. It's going to raise awareness. It's going to, you know, it makes the issue more serious. This is what should be happening. You know, everything should be happening to end this shit. But Joe is one of the few guys out there who has a massive audience and is doing like amazing, consistent work in the right way for animal rights. So to limit his movement and to have these potential negatives of an action like this, if he gets away with it, fucking best ever, amazing. But, um, you know, I think Joey would agree that like, there's a probably a much higher chance of one of Joey's debates, an interesting debate going viral than a video that comes out of this. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it will, but I think that the general public is probably a lot less interested in viewing something like this um, because yeah, that's just what they're like. It's a guy, it's a crew of people who have invaded a slaughterhouse, which is great and it's exciting in its own way and things like, because people are watching to be entertained most of the time. But, um, you know, it's, I don't know. That's just, that's just how I feel. I feel like people, they, they like, so, so what I'm trying to say is if he gets, if he does an action like this and maybe it doesn't have such a effect, like him creating that documentary had its own dangers, but, um, but he was doing everything he could to, to get away with breaking into these places. Whereas here, he's like, come and get me you know, and he's challenging an unjust law. And that has a lot of merit in itself, but, you know, other people can do that as well. Whereas what other people can't do that Joey does is his whole social media presence and be Joey Carbstrong and do his thing. So I hope that makes sense what I'm saying there. Um, but look, like Joey has probably weighed up all this many, many times and made his decision. And he might have, he might be totally prepared for I'm sure he's totally prepared for either outcome of this being no problem at all and he gets away with it and nothing and no big deal or they arrest him and it becomes a major issue. He can't go back to the UK. Well, this is unlikely, but or, I don't know actually. He can't go back to the UK um, he, he, and he gets sent home. Uh, you know, that's, then that's a pretty fucking, you know, you, there's a lot of weighing up to do there of whether it would be worth it or not. Maybe he wants to get, maybe his best case scenario is to get caught because then it creates this publicity, it creates um, questions about the laws, and maybe this is his ultimate goal, and maybe this is his, like, a big shot that he's going for here, and who fucking knows? 
<clears throat> I mean, I think uh, basically there'll be a few reasons like that I would say we're satisfied with the amount of awareness we've raised. I don't think it's right now. Basically, people are just waking up. So we're trying to create as much awareness as possible. And then we'll, we'll, we're going to... I don't see us being up here for days. I don't see us being up here for days. All right, bro. How long then? Like, that's days is a long time. I don't think the cops are expecting days. <laughs> that was probably like, that was probably like, what the fuck? Why don't you, why don't you tell... You think it was an emotional decision, what he's doing here? I think Joey's more calculated than that. But, fuck, who knows? He's been through a lot. Uh, Cranswick, the owners, um, that they will uh, make a pledge to shut down all their slaughterhouses because they're torturing animals in them. Fuck yeah. How good's that? That was perfect. Let's watch that again. You tell uh, Cranswick... <laughs> Why don't you, why don't you tell uh, Cranswick, the owners, um, that they will uh, make a pledge to shut down all their slaughterhouses because they're torturing animals in them. Okay. okay. Fuck yeah, do that. Then we'll talk. I negotiate with them. Uh, we, 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 we're waiting on a couple medias to, to, to contact. Um, we, we want to create a bit of awareness for the public. It, this is a public interest issue. Uh, yeah, this is a massive company and they're torturing animals in here and everyone knows it. Um, well, when I feel like we've created enough awareness, we'll come down. Um, Uh, yeah, yeah, no. What do you mean will we come down quietly? What difference does it make? They're in a slaughterhouse. There's screams going on there all day, every day. What do you mean come down quietly? Like, he's worried he's going to shoot somebody or something? Yeah, we, 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 we are happy to comply. We, we're not here to cause you problems. We're here to create awareness about their animal torture. Nothing to do with you guys. And I know you're here to, obviously, we're here to create awareness and we're not here to create harassment, alarm, or distress to you or to anyone. We're just raising... He fucking answered that so well. Everyone watch this. Um, well, when I feel like we've created enough awareness, we'll come down. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, we, 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 we are happy to comply we're not here to cause you problems. We're here to create awareness about their animal torture. Nothing to do with you guys. And I know you're here to, obviously, we're here to create awareness and we're not here to create... This bit is amazing. ...harassment, alarm or distress to you or to anyone. We're just raising up awareness. And My name's Joey Carbstrong. Joey. Yeah. My name's Joseph Armstrong. But whoa, 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 the mask is off, Joey. Or should I say Joseph? I'm known as Joey Carbstrong. Yeah, yeah. Also, if, if the slaughterhouse, if the slaughterhouse have any compassion whatsoever. I know, I'm playing jo Joey. I would consider if they let one pig free, one pig free to sanctuary, if they allowed one free pig not to get tortured to death today, and they offered one bit of compassion to one animal, then I would consider ending this early. Okay, I'll let them know. Oh, yeah. Oh, please, please tell me that happened. How good is that? Oh, that looked like it was quite spur of the moment, actually. That was awesome. Ma Maybe they'll, maybe they'll allow one pig to be, to not be tortured to death. 
It would today. be nice. Um, it would be something. In this gas chamber here. This is Police so good. Here. I'll, uh, I'll put this down there, down this hole here. Right, I'm going to ask a couple, answer a couple questions from you guys. Because uh, he's such a legend. All right, I've got some questions coming through. Yeah. Okay. It's almost seven a.m. All this for a few minutes of taste pleasure. Yes, these, these pigs are being tortured to death for the customer. So yes, the customer has a level of accountability. The customer should be vegan, really. Unless you're happy with... This is a torture chamber. From now on, everybody needs to start asking them the very important question, what would Joey do? They've even padlocked it so we can't see what's going on in there, but luckily we've already got cameras in there. So, this is for bacon. Turn the camera to what you see. Police officer there. Um, this is the le this is the layerage over there, and they get forced in with mechanical doors here. They come out the gas chamber here, and uh, this is where they're stabbed in the throat. Process down the line there. They also cull sick animals in the layerage here. So if an animal is sick and limping, and they can't go to their own death, they'll just shoot them in the head. And replace the word animal when he's talking with person. Because that's what it is. Each animal is a person. That each individual, you know, a someone. One person to the sum of one, right? And it's, shame, it's a shame that people have this association with animals. First of all, humans are animals, right? That's what they believe. And also that animals are lower. They're this other thing. They're not really people. Like, and I say for myself as well, I didn't see animals as people at, for the first 26 years of my life. But um, if you just use the word person instead of animal, it, it's, you know, so powerful. And that's just another way to say it. And it's still true. And it makes it sound even fucking worse. This is where they're stabbed in the throat. Process down the left. Police officer there. Um, this is the le this is the layerage over there, and they get forced in with mechanical doors here. They come out the gas chamber here, and uh, this is where they're stabbed in the throat. Process down the line there. They also cull sick animals in the layerage here. So if an animal is sick and limping, and they can't go to their own death, they'll just shoot them in the head and stab them in the throat over here and then they'll feed them to people that's what they do here that's what they do here and they are that's why tash says individuals i say individuals too a lot but they're people you know we should i think we should say people i think it's so much better and if they argue they're not people be like just get a good argument for why they are people. Well, it's a person, right? It's not a thing. It's a someone, a person, a non-human person, yes, but a person of another species. And that does fit with some of the definitions of person. And that's all you need to make what you're saying 100% true. James, I despise slaughterhouse workers. Is it wrong for me to feel that way? I think they are mentally sick to work there. Um, I, I vent by like expressing my anger to them and to people who buy animal products and to everyone. Like, but if I really deep down am honest, I find it hard to truly blame people or be really mad. Even with, I don't want to let people off, but I just know that they're so conditioned. They're so manipulated for their whole life. And it's fucking hard to cross all of your objections off the list enough to make this leap that is very scary for a lot of people. 
into veganism. So, yeah, and when it comes to hating slaughterhouse workers, honestly, the best thing you could probably do is not hate. I, I can't, I don't think hate, more hate is probably the best thing. Like, I don't know, maybe try to kill them with kindness instead and see how that goes. <laughs> Joey is doing Jesus work. Jesus is a slacker. Yeah, Jesus, God, why aren't you intervening if you're so powerful? Why aren't you back? I thought you were coming back. Oh, actually, I thought you were risen. I don't see you anywhere. I see Joey on top of the gas chamber. No Jesus anywhere. But who cares? Because it's all about what would Joey do? So whatever. Uh, um, anyway, where were we? Have you tried those crystal deodorants, Julie? That's what we use, and they're super easy on the skin. These measly little It's kids. just a crystal, like, it's mad. And you just wet it and wipe it on. Doesn't smell, doesn't feel like anything's there, but boom, comfort and doesn't smell. What? The 40 year old vegan, the truth comes out. <clears throat> I worked in slaughterhouses as an inspector. Most workers are marginalized immigrants, refugees, migrants, lack of language skills, or given any other opportunities. Yeah, it's very sad for them too, actually, to be honest. You know, I bet, I bet most of them, I know there's some sickos, but I bet most of them wish they had a less violent job, a less horrific job where you're hearing screams of your soon-to-be victims all day long. That's pretty, you know, it takes its toll, even on the strongest willed person. All right, back to John. I don't think so. The, basically, all the processing happens down in there. That's a lairage. So, did you? In that, where the black curtain is. Not, that, not to my knowledge, I've, I've been in there with a the camera and that, so. Yeah, so, but basically they cull them, they shoot them in the skull right here, the animals, if they're sick. If they're down us. Um, do you want to see what I can see? Is it, we're at the top of the gas chamber here. That's how high it is. Um, and anyone else want to see inside the gas chamber? That's inside the gas chamber. RSPCA needs to stop assuring this. This gas chamber here, RSPCA should. Do you know why? They put their assurance logo on animals who have been tortured in this gas chamber. Watch my film, Pignorant. Watch my film, Pignorant, and also the latest investigation on my YouTube channel. We have brave activists here. Brave activists here have joined us. Every time I watch Joey, I just get so inspired. He's He's just always at it. He's the best. To raise awareness here. Um, it is horrible. Go. That's one of the best things Joey and his crew have done in this go around. Not just expose the gas chambers and got a documentary out there, but expose the RSPCA. And yeah, they're a disgrace. They are how society for the protection against cruelty to animals whatever the fuck that shit is against cruelty to animals and then the thing they put their tick of approval on is tortured pigs every single one of them tortured that's like a level of corruption that seems so surreal I barely believe I am living in a true world and it isn't a big prank on me, you know? Like, it just seems such bullshit. Like, how? How the fuck? How the fuck did that happen? The RSPCA putting ticks of approval, humane, on pigs that are tortured to death. And if you, if you think I'm exaggerating anybody, watch his videos of the torture chambers that he's standing on top of right now. Minutes, they are screaming and, as he's saying, they shit on themselves they vomit, they're fucking burning, 
they you, you, I've actually never really seen a being act like that they're so they're in so much pain they're freaking out so badly they're they're moving so fast and smashing their head against the pipes and the rails and like you know fuck imagine being in that body in that moment um, and then they put a tick of approval on it how is that how is that real honestly how is that real they should all go to jail I fully believe that if you wanted to leave the live stream go and look at the my latest video look at what they do in this disgusting gas chamber exactly. where they're torturing these poor animals this is Cranswick We're in we will watch should we watch now yes we will because it's going to make the rest of this video even more fucking crazy So, as a warning, guys, if you don't want to see that, I totally understand, but that's what we're going to watch. Maybe not the whole video, maybe just like 30 seconds of the torture chamber that he's standing on top of. Oh, there it is right there. Where is it? All right, ready? This is what the RSPCA proof. Um, oh, hang on. Looks like I've already watched. All right. The pigs are then lowered down into high concentrations of CO2 gas. The pigs begin to panic and struggle. CO2 is a scientifically known aversive gas that causes guys, pain, spiritual distress, like and terror. The pigs begin flailing around in agony and desperation. Pigs climb over each other trying to escape, while other pigs frantic. Who would say that's not torture? That is torture. What is torture if that's not torture? That is fucking torture. You know, people are like, oh, it's just quick, painless, they just go to sleep. Does that look like they're just going to sleep? gasp for oxygen. They are breathing in air that doesn't oxygenate them. That's why they are like that. That is fucked. That is fucked. They're fucking disgusting, these people. Everyone who pays for this shit is fucked. All right, I said we just watched 30 seconds. Back to Joey. Now watch this video with new eyes. Oh, fuck, not this one. In Cranswick Food right now in Watton, the same one that I investigated with my team. Um, yes. And there's five other activists with me. Omar, what are humans doing? Yeah. What is God doing if there's a God? And what are humans doing? This is the UK. You know what I mean? Isn't this one of the most civilized countries on earth, apparently? Torturing pigs to death. 4,000 a day at just this one facility. Legally, normally, everybody's paying for that to happen. Like, in our day-to-day -day lives, where is anything this mental normal? There's nothing. This is the fucking craziest thing on earth. Share this stream around. Share this stream around. We're on top of a active gas chamber right now. Are we mad if Joey or all of us just learn this skill? Like right now, it would have been so good if Joey could have shown this, just like we did just then, watch the slaughterhouse footage. For anybody that's joining this stream, and I, I assume it was probably a popular stream, that he was able to share his screen, you know, and, um, and show, show what he's standing on top of. It would have been good. But yeah, anyway. Uh, 
RSPC AR joke, yeah, that's right. Share this stream around. So this is the kill floor. And this is the gas chamber that we're on top of. And that's where they force them in. That's where they force the pigs in with mechanical doors. And they go down here. I'll show you. Into a pit. Filled with gas. And they burn from the inside out. It's a terrible, terrible burning, uh, aversive gas. It's suffocating to death. Being tortured. And that's what these, uh, these money-hungry scumbags are doing to these uh, beautiful, intelligent beings. Um, please share this investigation. Share the Cranswick investigation. Help us to raise awareness about these horrifying gas chambers. What do you mean you guys wouldn't be able to do what Joey is doing? Why wouldn't you be able to do it? If uh, Cranswick... If Cranswick released one of these animals, we'll consider... Um, ending our awareness raising campaign. Not for, for today. That'd be cool. If they allow one pig not to be tortured today to death. One. Just one. They really should shut down this gas chamber. Why isn't the government shutting it down? It's a disgusting thing. So I'm just still curious, Kerry. You'd be scared being in this sort of high stress situation or you'd be really feeling like the gravity of the situation of where you are and what happens there or what do you mean? I'm just curious. Oh, I get so emotional and angry. I don't think I'd be a good activist, but I want to get out there. Hmm. Yeah, I can understand that. Uh, but it's worth a try. Maybe you'd be better in person than you expect. Because, you know, we're together, like we kind of talk shit, but when we're together with people, we we don't talk like this, you know? We fucking... We're very nice and try to encourage people to be vegan. It, de it depends where we are, I guess, you know, what's going on. All right. What's this say? Okay, there's a part two on his Insta. Should we skip to that, the real thing? What are you thinking? Maybe I should check that out. You're not cut out for this trauma. Well, Joey is cut out. He can handle this shit. I mean, it's not easy for him. Fucking, you can see it's changed him over the years and like it changes anybody who thinks about this enough and comes up against all the bullshit that he does. But um, he's a very strong dude and he's been through so much shit and, you know, just, yeah, man, just thinking of, just thinking how, what can I do for the animals next? What can I do next? Gary quit, Joey won't. Well, you know, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, Gary did a lot, so... Maybe by the time Joey is as many years deep as Gary, who knows, man, I don't know. But um, exactly, fair play to them both. Things happen in life, you know. Like I just had to have some time where I was very focused on my health. I had to pretend to myself I wasn't an activist so that I could just get through my own shit. And I'd tell my family, like, don't worry, I'm not gonna do this anymore. And so, maybe, who knows, maybe Gary will come back one day. I always wonder that, because it must be hard. But who knows what he's doing as well. He was never like on social media and we weren't keeping up with Gary's life ever. So um, 
dude might be still doing plenty just because it's not on social media, whatever. Night, Julie. Thanks for coming. And uh, see you next time. All right, anyway, let's keep... Gary inspired us all. Gary inspired me. Gary inspired Joey. Gary inspired so many people. So yeah, Gary did do so much good. Dude started a massive movement. What a fucking boss. So good. Nah, they're in the lairage. I'm trying to read your comments here. They're torturing these animals in this gas chamber here. We come here in here about an hour ago. Um, we'll be up on top of this chamber All right. for the near gonna, foreseeable future. Yeah, let me just see. But when we arrived, it was all using scum, mate. I can't believe they can get away with this. People need to stop giving these gas chambers, stop paying their money for, for this torture. Bloody oath. Need to live vegan. Need to boycott these disgusting animal abusing companies. Exactly. It is hell on earth. It is hell on earth. Anyone in, in this live stream right now who's just arrived? We're currently on top of a CO2 gas chamber in the UK. In Watton. Peace out, Chantel. All right. All right. Let's check his um, second video. Real quick. Oh, guys, do you ever watch this dude? Matt Dilla Hunty. He's on the Atheists. And fuck, he's fucking so funny. He destroys religion constantly. It's his job and it's amazing. But he's an absolute joke when it comes to veganism. Maybe we'll watch what he said about it one day and laugh at how stupid it was. Um, how am I going to do this? Hold up. Hmm. Actually, I don't know. I might bail. Wait a sec. Let's see if I can find this Joey thing. All right, what is this? Mm, nah, I can't. There's no like distance bar or anything. I don't want to get into a mad long video, but I mean, maybe. Did, did, because, you know, Did they have an ending to this live stream? As in, did the cops uh, make some move in the end or something? Or looks like he's kind of just chilling up there. And I think we got, I think we, you know, got the fucking message and like got a good, a good dose of what the fuck happened today and how good it was. Yeah, Vegan Gains did rip into him, um, that Matt Dillahunty guy one time, absolutely. And so did Cosmic Skeptic when he was a vegan. So, yeah. All right. Anyway, yeah. Cool. I'm going to bounce. Thank you guys for joining me today. If you want to support the stream, feel free to tip. And if you want to support Joey then go to pignorant.com because he's got a fundraising thing going on. I'm pretty sure still going. And um, guys, appreciate it. Appreciate you guys coming, hanging out and talking animal rights with me, watching these vids with me. I really appreciate that. I will probably stream again tomorrow. See, ha see what happens. And uh, maybe there's some updates for what Joey's been doing today. But before I go, claps in the chat. 
Clap emojis for Joey and his team. Wait a second, you're gonna send a v $15 tip? But I don't have a credit card. Do you have PayPal? <laughs> if you click that thing at the top where I've put, uh, I've pinned on the chat, it says, you can click on the thing there and it um, claps for Joey. And then you can do it. I will wait around a few minutes. Um, yeah, guys, we're very, the animals are very lucky to have Joey and so, kiss for Nikki! The animals are very lucky and so is Joey. Let me get, let me get my wife. Yes! Thank you so much, be the change, but cough it up. Cough up the cash. Do I have some rhymes? Of course I have some rhymes. You need a link to, oh, you've got some rhymes. James, we need a link to send rhymes. Fuck yeah. So send, um, DM me on Instagram or email me at jimmycashby at proton.me and boom. Big chill on yo, what's up? Things are going good, but I'm just thinking about bouncing right now, bro, unless you can convince me to not bounce. I was waiting around for Be The Change Be Vegan to tip me, but I ain't seen no tip. And I ain't waiting forever, but I will wait a little longer. <laughs> ah, yes, you have to search deep for the clap emojis, peeps. But um, fuck, what a champion. I don't know who he was with. I didn't rec I recognize one of their faces, I think. Philippe, what are you doing, bro? Maybe I'll stay. I'm hungry. It's early. It's 20 to 11, which is early, but I haven't, I want to hang with my wife because I've been working on this computer all, all afternoon. So, you know, I don't know. I'm in a tough position here. Jimmy the Jass. Thanks, Renzo. Did you get my tip after last night? Oh, was that you, Max? Yes, dude. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to read it out if you don't mind. You wrote, loving the $10 tip, legend. You wrote, loving the streams. I forget sometimes there are caring people in the world. You are appreciated. I appreciated that, appreciated that so much, dude. You know, because, man, like, I don't know what this stream kind of thing was going to be or if I would even stick with it or enjoy it or anything, but I'm really enjoying it because it is nice to, you know, be able to just speak my mind and be around people that also care and understand me. And, you know, I feel like you just feel that here too. And it's an awesome thing to be able to talk live to each other like this. So I appreciate it. Oh, what is this? Julie, you legend. Thank you so much. 1999 that is extremely generous i appreciate that very much julie i appreciated your comments um throughout the stream too thanks so much i hope you have an amazing day i hope you have an amazing day julie you champion that's sick you all right well whoa ah uh, be the change <laughs> well I appreciate the thought anyway dude oh gee <laughs> I've never seen a stream where James hasn't eaten so this is rare what are you talking about firstly I do not eat on all my streams I think I've only eaten on one stream right one maybe I ate on two with a pizza and um Oh, and with watermelon. Oh, was that the same night? And recently I ate something. Popcorn. Didn't I? Yeah. But I don't always. They're the only times I think. But in saying that, tonight, yeah, I did eat on stream. I ate a chickpea curry and it was fucking good. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. I did not realize there was all these comments. Oh, Omar. Thank you so much, bro. I appreciate that, dude. You're a legend. Omar Vegan Run. What does that mean, by the way? Oh, you're the, you're the runner. Fucking awesome, bro. Thanks for the tip, man. 
<clears throat> we need streams. Streams are great. It's really fun. Because it's, it's more of a job to record a video, then upload the video, and then uh, you know, record the video, edit the video, upload the video, um, all that kind of thing. Whereas this is just, once it's all set up, it's set up. You stream, it records, and then you turn it off, and it's uploaded. It's so good. You know, it doesn't have all the benefits of editing and stuff, but it makes, it make, like I've got an extra 25 or so hours content of all about animal rights in just over a week, you know? So like 25 hours of animal rights extra on my channel. I don't know how popular the streams will be, but I've seen most of them are getting at least a thousand views. And that's a thousand people hearing, you know, a bunch of things I'm saying about animal rights. I'm happy with that. I wish it was 10, 8 billion, but anyway, a, a thousand something. Um, right, I'll stick around just a little bit more. I'm, I, no, I'm not, who did that? Who did that? Wait, let me get to that question in a second. Where is that? I got a four, a 420 tip. From Anonymous. Oh shit. Y'all know what that means. Most of y'all know. Fuck, you legend. Who was that? Why stay Anonymous? Tell me who you are, Anonymous. It's time I shoot. Ah, Buff Vegan Yoda, it was you. Don't claim it if it wasn't you, but if it was you, thank you so much. Legendary. I appreciate that, guys. Ah, I need it. I need it. I desperately need. I was in David Rams's chat today. He was responding to Christspiracy first. So I was watching that, and uh, he was doing it live. And... Mel and Steve, they're two activists who've been working with Joey lately, who have their own YouTube channel and stuff, and they're great. Um, they, oh, was it then they said something? Oh, actually, no, it was David. He, he made some joke about I, that he doesn't need weed to chill and all this shit. And I was like, well, bro, good for you, but I fucking do. <laughs> I don't even chill when I'm blazed. I'm still just like, What's the fuck's going on in this world? <laughs> Smoke that shit. Um, yeah, 8 billion views. I would love that. If 8 billion people heard me talk about animal rights for an hour, I would be beside myself. Who wouldn't? I would love any vegan to be able to just say a few words about veganism to 8 billion people. PayPal automatically sends anonymous. Oh, okay. Well, if you did it PayPal, then I always find out who it was later because I get email notifications with people's names. So it says anonymous on the stream for some reason. Why did it do that? And then I find out as soon as I get off. <laughs> yeah, Mel, Mel, Steve and David, they are all great. Absolutely. I just lit the blunt into my oxygen tank. Boom, like that shit. Vegan straight edge, cool. I was straight edge for 10 years. And then I was like, oh, if only I could tell you guys the story of what happened for me to break that. Hmm. I'll think about it. Fucking crazy story. Sometimes weed makes me too introspective and I ruminate. I do that shit too, but I don't know. I think the more you smoke, the more you learn to just be however you want to be with it. It doesn't like, I don't smoke much though. Like when I smoke, I have a little bit, a little hit here, a little hit there. Back in the day, I used to smoke, 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 smoke for like hours. You know, we, I try to smoke a gram, which um, I'm sure that's still not that much for a lot of people, but we used to smoke a lot. And now I'm, I don't go through anywhere near that amount. It's your birthday? Dude, happy birthday, bro. Stoked you are here in the stream, on the chat. That's epic. 
Good for you, dude. What did you get up to? Donation for story time. Um, it would have to be a pretty decent one because I'd be... <laughs> it's a pretty crazy story. I couldn't tell all of it, actually, because it's so funny, but no. I would love to tell all of it. Maybe one day, but I would have to... I'd have to ask somebody first. <laughs> and that's part of why it's so funny and crazy because... Because I don't want to say too much. Because then you just start guessing and then I'll be like, fuck, they got it. That was hopefully cryptic. <laughs> yeah, how I broke my sobriety, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I did 10 years where I was like, I didn't even have a Panadol, I didn't have a coffee, I didn't have any drinks, I didn't have any weed, absolutely zero anything. And it was good. But um, yeah, well, I made my choice for, for many reasons. All right, I'm going sober on alcohol, good. We very rarely drink, very occasionally we'll have maybe one glass of wine, very occasionally maybe two, like we go months without it. Um, and, I, and that's because we don't like it because we think it's shit, because you feel like shit after it. I don't even feel good when I drink. I drink and I'm like, I felt better before I did that. So yeah, I, and it's just such a uh, harmful drug on the body that's horrible stuff. I've been sober lifelong. Whoa, Axel. Never had any mushrooms. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to recommend. <laughs> oh, I'm not allowed to do that on YouTube. Just kidding. My cat's meowing. Let's see who it is. I think it's Dexter. Dexter. Meow. Yeah, boy. What's up? Come here. He'll jump on the table probably. Come here, bro. <laughs> Sub legend. Can you hear that purr? <laughs> Dude, say hi to everyone. Fuck yeah. There's his butt. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm getting shrooms soon. Good move, fart boy. Sometimes you gotta change things in life. Oh, yeah, I have no regrets. I'm loving life so much. Fuck it. I'm living. I'm doing what I want to do, and I'm making decisions that I think are very good. I'm, you know, I'm here. I, as I just said, I'm happy. I put. I've got an amazing family. My cats, my wife, my fam. I love where I live. I love what we do. I love going to the raves. I love chilling and blazing. Putting 25 hours of animal rights content on the internet in the last week. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy. So, you know, if I'm ticking my boxes and I'm kicking my goals, then fuck it. I'm, I'm good with what I'm doing. All right. Anyway, guys, I think we're going to bail. I am around that time. And yes, Bonebo is the best vegan cat food. That's our opinion. All right, guys. So, a teaaholic, yeah. Well, tea also, <clears throat> if you drink enough tea, you're getting a bunch of caffeine, but sometimes we use it for that. Get a bit of energy, why not? Cool. All right, guys, we bouncing. I'll probably see you tomorrow for a stream. And if um, anything interesting happens overnight and you want to send some vids my way to react to or anything like that, then send to my Insta DM. And we'll catch you soon. Caffeine is good. <laughs> cool. Catch you guys.